Hello and welcome to your metabolic biochemistry tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be concentrating on some key concepts, metabolic biochemistry, and your success as a biochemist, both here in your practicals and in the real world, will depend on how well you understand these concepts and how well you can apply them. So the four topics that are going to be covered include the standard international units, the SI units, spectrophotometry, standard curves and dilution factors. As most of you would have learnt in school, we do use SI units in science. So when it comes to amounts, they are always in either grams, kilograms, milligrams, or they can be in mole, such as in millimole. Volumes we refer to as meters squared or centimeters squared but we can also use litres or milliliters. Concentration is an amount per volume, so it can either be milligrams per mil, or milligrams per litre, kilograms per litre, or moles per litre. If it's really small, it could be micromoles per mil. And some concentrations using this method are identical, such that two moles per litre is equivalent to two millimoles per milliliter or two micromoles per microliter. Likewise three grams per liter is equivalent of three milligrams per mil or three micrograms per microliter. It is important not to confuse moles with molar. Moles are strictly an amount whereas molar often denoted by a capital M is a concentration. In your metabolic biochemistry practicals, you will need to measure the concentration of various enzymes, proteins and other metabolites. And the way we commonly do this is to use spectrophotometry. So using spectrophotometry, we can measure the concentration of solutions by comparing how well the solution absorbs light of a particular wavelength. And this is done using a machine called an absorbance spectrophotometer. Your lab manual has detailed instructions on how to use the various spectrophotometers in the laboratory. Spectrophotometry works as a means to measure concentrations because of an association between light absorbance and concentration. According to the Beer-Lambert law, absorbance A is equal to the concentration times the path length of the light times a constant known as the extinction coefficient. So the light intensity becomes weaker as it passes through a solution. How weak it becomes depends on the concentration of that solution and in many cases this is a linear relationship that is the absorbance will increase as the concentration increases linearly. And this means it's possible to compare readings against a standard concentration curve. A series of standards with known amounts or concentrations is prepared from a stock solution. The standards and test sample are then assayed at the same time. Absorbances are plotted as a standard curve and the amount of material in the test sample is then read from the curve. Dilution factors may be required to calculate the concentration in the original sample. Depending on your spectrophotometer, you can zero your readings, in which case zero millimolar of your standard gives a zero absorbance reading. If you do this, you would expect your standard curve to pass through the origin of the plot. If you do not zero your standard, then do not expect your standard curve to pass through the origin. When you graph your results, it is ideal to use a convenient scale, and so you do not have to fill the whole sheet of paper up. For a standard curve, you should always draw a line of best fit. Do not simply join the dots. Standard points only should be plotted, and they should be easy to see. The line does not have to go through the origin. It depends on what you use to zero the spectrophotometer. But 
the convention in biochemistry is to blank against your zero standard tube, the tube that does not contain any standard. When you do blank against the zero standard tube, then your standard curve must pass through the origin, through zero. All figures should have a title, all axes should be labelled, and the units of measurement provided. When reading off values from the graph, there is no need to draw extra lines or plot your test readings. It just makes things messy. At some concentrations, the relationship between absorbance and concentration ceases to be linear. And so it is important to remember that the standard curve is only linear over a certain range. When there are larger amounts of standard, so in the example here, when there is too much glucose, a linear relationship will cease to exist. So the amount of glucose in a, in a standard is no longer proportional to the absorbance reading. So in this diagram here, it is valid to read the amount of glucose in sample A, which is at lower concentrations of glucose, where the standard is linear, but it is not valid to read the concentration of glucose in sample B, as the standard curve in this section is no longer linear. When making measurements, you will often have to dilute your samples, and when undertaking dilutions, it's important not to get confused. So if you are asked to make a 1 in 5 dilution, that will mean you take one volume and add it to four volumes to give you a 1 in 5 dilution. Dilutions are important because our unknown concentration needs to be within the range that can be read using an absorbance spectrophotometer. And so our unknown concentration needs to be of a similar dilution to what our standards are. It's important to remember how much we do dilute our unknown sample. So when it comes to taking our absorbance readings, we can then reverse our dilution factor back to give us our concentration. So if we dilute our unknown 1 in 5, and then we take our absorbance readings and measure it against our standard, we will then have to multiply our final concentration value by 5 to get it back to its real concentration.